Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihi allahu falamudilla lahu wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek for help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal nas uttaku rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidata wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaku allaha alladhi tasa'aduna bihi wal arham inna allaha ka'ana alaykum raqiba. O humanity, be mindful of your creator who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and through both Allah spread countless men and women. And be mindful of Allah in whose name you appeal to one another and honor your ties of kinship. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. Bismillah. So, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, it's so nice to see you all again for another Juma. Uh, as we are starting another new year, a new year here, um, maybe with New Year's resolutions that we have yet to abandon or that we, like myself, we've already abandoned. Uh, I want to revisit something for myself and I hope something for you all here in this khutbah space that we offer. Uh, as a teacher of mine put it, the primary purpose of the khutbah is to remind the people of Allah, of God. Uh, oftentimes, people will take it to an extreme to uh, use the khutbah as an outlet to admonish and solely warn people to fear Allah and to uh, just, just be in a state of continued suppression and of fear. Uh, but the wisdom is in the balance between uh, a hope uh, for Allah, a desire for Allah, and a fear, not a fear from uh, any kind of a scared tendency or any kind of connotation of uh, being afraid like you are of something that will do harm to you, but a fear in a sense of wonder, a fear in a sense of awe. Uh, and we've talked about this time and time again, that the fear that Allah speaks of and the fear that is lifted up by the Prophet Sallallahu when the Prophet Sallallahu tells us, Ittaqillah, when the Quran tells us, Ya ayyuhannas uttaku rabbakum ladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidata, that uh, to be mindful, to not just fear God, but to be mindful of God, to be conscious of God. Uh, so not a kind of courage, the cowardly dog kind of fear uh, that, that we may think of when we think of the word fear, but to uh, lift up this element of wonder. Uh, in, in the Bible, uh, one of the Proverbs says that the, big, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. And the same verb that is used in the Hebrew can also be translated to be uh, not just a literal fear, but a sense of wonderment and a sense of awe. And in the Quran, in Surah Juman, we're on the topic of Juma, we're on the topic of khutbahs uh, in the Quran. Uh, in Surah Juma, Allah says, O ye who believe, when the call for salah is proclaimed on Friday, faso ala dhikrillah, faso ala dhikrillah, hasten for the remembrance of Allah and leave off all business. That is much better for you if you but knew. And I want to lift up this verb of uh, sa'a that is being used here, faso ala dhikrillah. It's the, uh, so, faso is the it says, you know, so so hasten. It's it's a command form of the verb for sa'a. And we may be familiar with the verb or the, the word of sa'a because it's the same root word, it's the same word that is used in sa'i. Uh, we're familiar with sa'i with respect to the ritual that is done during umrah, during the hajj, in the running between the uh, mountains of Safa and Marwa. Um, so thinking about when, when Allah says to us, Faso ala dhikrillah, um, to hasten, to run and race to the remembrance of Allah. It's not just a, hey, turn this light switch on and now Allah is remembered, but the Jum'ah, the uh, prayer itself, the 
uh, aspect of Juma is one in which we should race to it. Just psychologically think about when we have this word sa'a, when we have this command of faso, uh, we think about our mother Hajr, how she was running back and forth between Safa and Marwa, looking for water, trying to keep her son alive, trying to just survive, but having hope that Allah would still be there, but still racing back and forth. Just imagine not just the despair, but also just the hope in going up a mountain and maybe seeing something, or maybe going down into the valley and seeing something. So this hope that underlies maybe the despair that is there as well. So the khutbah is kind of like that, that drink of water. It's the zamzam in the sa'i that we have, this reminder of Allah uh, that, that, that exists. And so uh, in our last conversation together, when we think about you know, this, this, this sa'i, this, this running back and forth from, uh, to Allah, um, this running that we are experiencing, we, we talked in our last conversation about this concept of radical love in Islam. Uh, and there's just so much that we had to share. That's just, it's hard to encompass it. Uh, at the retreat that I presented this at, uh, I opened the presentation saying that I had changed that presentation at least five times before uh, I had actually given it uh, the day before. And I was saying that it was as if someone had told me to go out into the night sky or to go up into you know, the, the, the universe and to now describe everything that I'm seeing and just give a vivid description within an hour of all of the night sky, of all of the universe. And it's an, it's an untenable task. It's something that is just so overwhelming because it's just, you can't encompass that. You can't faithfully encompass such a broad concept, such a large concept in such a short amount of time. And so I said that, you know, uh, maybe it's easier for us to identify a constellation and we go constellation to constellation and we start to make a map so that we can try to understand. But it got me thinking when we're talking about radical love. We're talking about this concept of love for Allah, love for God, God's love for us. A lot of these can be abstract for us. It can be hard for us to think about, um, especially given how we're experiencing life. Um, so today I want to center on this idea of godly love, inshallah, that as much as we're told that Allah loves us or that we are to fear and love Allah, quite honestly, this love can be complicated and this can be hard to do. It can be hard to manifest beyond simple acknowledgement. Um, when we came into this earth, uh, we were separated from the divine. We were uh, put into this world um, where uh, we grow attachments. We, we you know, develop as human beings. We go through our lives. Uh, we develop attachments to things. We develop attachment to things that are around us, the world itself, people, objects, habits, etc. Um, but as life goes on, we naturally will experience loss. We will experience uh, a detachment from those that we have attached ourselves, um, both maybe expected or unexpected. And so friends who might be close to us, they might pass away. Uh, our parents may pass away. People, close things to ourselves, we might lose, whether it's our jobs or it's our own sense of security or our health. Hardships might arise. But yet we are still told to love Allah unconditionally. And we're taught that the love of Allah is something that uh, is always available for us to access. It's always something that is freely given. It's a constant and a guarantee for when we're ready for it. But it can sometimes feel hard to say that we love Allah especially when all these things are happening to us or, or, you know, wherever course we were going through that a lot of this feels like we've kind of, we've, you know, either built ourselves up to this point or uh, the things that we have not experienced have maybe been because Allah doesn't love us. So uh, we can have some complicated feelings on this. So I want to address the question of how can we love Allah just tangibly? How can we love Allah? And the fact is that just thinking of anything, you know, it's hard to conceptualize or contain, you know, Allah with respect to uh, the aspect of an object or, uh, you know, mirroring a entity or a uh, human relationship or a worldly relationship. But uh, the fact is that you can't love someone, something or anything without at least knowing that entity, without at least knowing them. So we've talked in the past in, in, in several iterations, and inshallah, we'll continue to talk about how amongst many ways to know Allah, 
One way is by being able to recognize the attributes of Allah around us and within ourselves. We've talked how Allah has 99 and more attributes and that these attributes are reflected in various parts of the world as well as in ourselves. Uh, and like signs on a highway, they point us back to our destination. They point us to where we came from, but also to where we will go. Uh, and the unique part of Islam is that from Allah we came and to Allah we returned. So these signs will, post, uh, will point us both ways. Uh, but before we can get to even that level, before we can get to even that level of knowing Allah and subsequently loving or fearing Allah, fearing, I am saying in this context of awe and wonder. So I'm not saying a fear like a scary movie kind of fear. I'm saying a fear in a sense of just being in wonderment and awe uh, and recognition of Allah, that we need to simplify and simply recognize first and foremost that there is a God, that there is Allah. For many of us who were born Muslims, we were taught to do certain things more so out of habit and ritual than in intention. Uh, we're taught to say Bismillah before we begin everything, Astaghfirullah when we mess up, MashaAllah when we hear something good of others, Alhamdulillah when something good happens to us, uh, Allahu Akbar when we go up the stairs, you know, SubhanAllah when we come down, Inshallah whenever we're making plans in the future, uh, or just doing the tasbih um, after prayer. Uh, it's something that it becomes a habit to us. Um, and oftentimes uh, when we think of it now, it's just, uh, it, it's been watered down to just two initials now. Now, it's either IA or AH or MA, you know, it's just something that we say out of habit. Uh, it's, it, we, we may not find tangible benefit in there, um, but this isn't meant to be in uh, these, these phrases. They're not meant to be the, the inshallah of uh, Joe Biden or the uh, inshallah of our uh, Arab brothers and sisters that have, you know, that just will, it's just now part of the, the language that you just say inshallah for something that doesn't get done. And so that's just there. But uh, we look into the depth of these words. We look into the psychology of these words that uh, each of them reminds ourselves that first and foremost, there is a God. Before the bism, which is the name, before the hamd, which is the praise, before the istighfar, which is the fear, there is Allah. There is Allah that is attached to it. And so, as I mentioned before, anything else, before even beginning anything or, you know, trying to say, how can I love Allah? Before even wrestling with those questions, those concept, we have to know that there is Allah. As I mentioned, so often we will just say these words out of habit um, or out of ritual, um, and we won't really get anything out of it. But uh, there's a wisdom that's shared uh, by Imam Ali uh, with respect to this when talking about the Quran, um, and we've shared this before with respect that all the wisdom of the, the universe is contained within the Quran, and all the wisdom of the Quran uh, and the secrets of the universe and all that is contained within Surah Fatiha, and all the wisdoms of Surah Fatiha are contained within um, the uh, Bism uh, of uh, Bismillah. Uh, and then, you know, going from there, just watering it down up until the dot under the ba, uh, that there's so much that is contained there. So we, we think about when we say bismillah, when we just say it out of habit, that there is so much more beyond just a phrase that we were taught to say. There is in just how we invoke the name psychologically, we are recognizing that there is a God. If we don't at least recognize that, it's just a phrase that we say. So someone like Joe Biden can say, inshallah, uh, and you know, not, not think about it twice, but for those of us who at least recognize the components of that name, we know that there's something more significant there. So as I mentioned, life takes its unique turns. It takes its natural course with surprises, with twists and turns. And our faith in Allah a lot of times gets put to the test. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we, we came from our creator, but we're kind of on this orbit uh, that as we get further and further away um, from the source, the source itself, uh, it's like the sun. It gets uh, smaller and smaller from where we are, but it still provides for us. You know, we, we may feel that we're detached from the creator, we're far off, um, and that we don't need the creator now. You know, it's just insignificant, uh, but we, we don't uh, think about how much of a factor the creator plays in our life uh, when that is gone, when that's removed. And eventually, uh, whatever orbits around comes full circle. And so we, we, we embrace uh, and we are coming back to God, but we recognize that uh, even as we get farther away, our life, things will happen in our lives. And, you know, God will just maybe take a back seat in a sense, not, not in a sense, literally, but uh, God will take a seat to where it's just, it doesn't feel like God is playing an active part in our lives. And so part of this 
uh, psychology that we need to undo is, is just to understand first and foremost where we came from, but to whom, from whom we came from. Uh, and as I mentioned, our, our love for Allah during this time when we uh, are going through life, uh, through its tribulations, through its successes, never really gets a chance to actualize. Um, and that first step of love in loving uh, a partner, in loving a human being, in loving something is just to be cognizant of it, to be conscious of it, to be aware of it, to accept that it exists. If we can't even acknowledge the existence, then this relationship that we have, uh, that, that there is Allah that is uh, above us, there's a God that created us, there's a God that uh, is, is, is there, but we don't have a connection there. Whereas in the Quran, Allah, uh, Allah says that Allah is near, that indeed we've created humanity and we know whatever their inner thoughts are and that we are nearer to them than their jugular vein. That th th that this is not just a God that you know created us and then abandoned us, but this is a God that is intimately involved with our lives if we are to recognize, if we are to acknowledge that. And part of us just saying these small phrases, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, psychologically just reinforces that we understand that. Um, but if we don't acknowledge that existence, if we just think about you know God is just not not concerned with us or that these words are just words uh, the foundation of our faith is going to be shaky um, when we just when we don't realize how significant these small words are uh, the foundation of our faith to be shaky to the where our prayers will feel empty and hollow our repetition of god's names will feel monotonous uh, the prayer will feel like physical exercise the rituals the sacrifices and supplications will feel unfulfilled it will feel like we're just losing part of ourselves but not getting anything back uh, and even more so our connection to allah will be easily strained, especially when we go through times of difficulty and times of loss. The silence that we might experience uh, during a hardship when calling out to Allah and in despair may actually feel even more, and it may feel like abandonment. Uh, and in any case, we need to ask ourselves, who exactly is God in our lives? What, what role does God play for us? Do we love God? Do we love God more than our family? Do we love God more than our spouses, our income, our favorite food, our favorite TV shows or movies and artists? Um, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's easy to preach on this, but it's hard to actually conceptualize it because we know these things. We know our spouses, we know our families, we know our uh, wealth, we know our, you know our favorite cuisines, we know our movies, we know our, uh, our favorite music artists and things like that. But do we know God? Um, and how can we, how can we even do any of these unless we first and foremost, not just know who God is, know who Allah is within our frame of existence, but just know that Allah is. Uh, as the Quran states in Surah Hashr, we have the beautiful litany of names of Allah. It begins with who Allah, that Allah is, period, that Allah is, and then so much more. So even in difficulty, if we know and believe that Allah is, it will do us much better than if we simply think that Allah is. That Allah is an abstract. Allah is just kind of out there. I'm, I'm getting kind of like played like Pinocchio. I'm on strings. Um, but we think about how those who came before us, they at least knew that God was. They knew that God was there, uh, that they believed in God. Uh, and how it helped them during their times in difficulty. We think about the Prophet ﷺ at Taif when his shoes are filled with blood and he's just like, Allah, to you I complain. I'm, I have nowhere else to go. He had nothing else left, but he called out to Allah in a mode of frustration. He was frustrated. He said, what are, are you angry at me? Like, what, what, what am I going to do? Or when we talk about the Prophet Ibrahim salam as a seeker, when he's like, this is, uh, you know, this when he sees the sun rising, this is my God. When he sees the sun setting, it's the, this is not my God. He knew that, uh, that his God uh, was beyond that. Um, or when Hajar, as I mentioned earlier in, this, in, in the khutbah, you know, running through the wilderness, was seeking water. She, she had told Ibrahim when he had left her that if, you know, if this is something that Allah had ordained, Allah will not abandon us. And she ran back and forth. So uh, having that belief that something more will come. And in the Bible, actually, uh, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a story of Hajar in Genesis where she takes a seat and she starts to cry. And the, the angel comes to her and says, what's wrong? And, and you see that uh, th there's at least that faith that is there. So we remind ourselves here that the first step in our path back to Allah as Muslims and as other seekers, whether we're born as Muslims, whether we're converts, whether we may, wherever we might be in our life or our spiritual journey, that first and foremost, Allah is. 
that hardships will come, triumphs will come. Uh, and as I mentioned, like a planet in the solar system, we're going to orbit away from the source of our light, from that uh, big emanating light for a short period of time. The light is going to get smaller and smaller for us, but it's always going to be there until a time when we are immersed in that light. Allah was there when we weren't. Allah was there when, uh, not just when we weren't, uh, but Allah was there uh, when nothing else was. And Allah is when we have and when we don't have. Allah will be when we won't have. And Allah will be with us when nothing else will be. So remembering Allah is a source of comfort. As the Quran says that verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. And that when we remember Allah, Allah will remember us. It might be complicated. It might feel weird. We might be in a rough spot, but that's not wrong. It's not wrong for us to say, to suppress everything that we're feeling if we're going through a tough time, if we're going through a difficulty or uh, through a rough patch. It's not wrong to rely on Allah, to say that I'm feeling this way, but to just have an association with Allah as, you know, Allah just obviously hates me or Allah doesn't like this or Allah doesn't do that. Uh, it may speak a little bit more to the conventions that we have of Allah. Do we only see Allah in this fear-based model or do we see Allah uh, beyond just that? So the first step, as I mentioned, in the path of godly love, in the path of love of the divine and love for the divine is to recognize that there is God. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu says that verily the religion is easy and no one burdens themselves in religion, but that it overwhelms them. Follow the right course, seek closeness to Allah, give glad tidings and seek help for worship in the morning and the evening and a part of the night. Baby steps is what we're trying to advocate here, wherever we might be. You might be a Hafiz of Quran, you might be someone who's an Imam, you might be somebody who has barely even, you know, prayed uh, one Salah in their life. You might be somebody who is, is still exploring your, your faith. The path is very easy and we're, we're encouraging baby steps, but starting it can be really hard. But the first step of starting on that path is trust. So just for our note here, next time we say Alhamdulillah, next time we say Bismillah, next time we say MashaAllah, or anything else that we say that has the name of Allah, we remember that we say it not just because our parents taught us, we say it because we remember those, remember who we are, whose we are, and to whom we will return. And that these names that we that we utter, these phrases that we are uttering, the Bismillah, whenever we're just, you know, we're about to eat, Bismillah, you know, when we're, we're about to do anything, we just say, you know, the name of Allah with it, or something great happens, we get a great score on our test, we do something great, uh, get a raise, Alhamdulillah, we just say it, uh, but we recognize that these are lights on that path, ways for us to not just become closer to Allah, but in our faith, but become better in our faith, and better humans. So, inshallah, the next time we, we gather together, we can talk about how the love for Allah, the godly love, begets a love that is for everyone here. So as I mentioned, brothers and sisters, um, as we go forward from the Jum'ah, from this brief respite from our worldly affairs, our jobs, our tasks, whatever it may be, this time, this 30 minute block is 2% of your day today. Uh, let this be a time for, uh, be a time for what it is intended to be, simply a time to remember Allah. As I mentioned, we are going to be going through so many different things and uh, you know, ups and downs in life, our convention for how we relate to Allah does not have to be the exact same. We might be in a really tough spot uh, and we may not want to be thinking about Allah and, and how we can inculcate a, a love for Allah like someone is telling us, um, but just to acknowledge that Allah is, um, is, is so, such a uh, such a big step beyond what we've kind of been conditioned to be. So remember that outside of this, 2% of your time is here. Remember outside of this, the other 98% of your day is on your own. Um, what you do with it or how, how you spend it is totally up to you. Um, but remember that Allah and our faith is not just an entity that we fear uh, or that we run from or that we run scared from. That Allah is not a entity that has abandoned us or that does not holistically love us or does not care about us or is uh, distant from us. Um, remember what the Quran says that Allah is actually near to us. Allah is with us. Allah responds to us when we call, call upon Allah. So the next time we start any action, when we say Bismillah or anything else, let us mean it and then ask, why do we say it? You know, why, why do we say it beyond the fact that maybe it was taught to us? What is making me still say this? Why am I still thinking about it? And let us leave this Jummah remembering who we are and whose we are. 
as I mentioned, the path of Allah's love, the path is always there. It's going to be there. This, this love that Allah has for us is always there. We might not be able to, in a good place to figure it out particularly, but it's always there. It awaits us wherever we are, who we are, and wherever we might be. But let us begin this path of godly love, this radical love, by starting first and foremost remembering that where this path leads, where this path is going to end up, so that we can first take our first steps here. And as I mentioned, the Quran reminds us that in the remembrance of Allah, hearts find rest. And so let's practice the sincere remembrance going forward from the Bismillahs at the start of our actions to the Alhamdulillahs at the conclusion. And let us change that psychology we have in how we treat these phrases as mere expressions and use them as the lights that they are on the path back to Allah. Once we recognize this and recognize how to love Allah, who to love, um, we will see how we can then be agents of love. We can share this divine love to the rest of creation. Inshallah, we ask Allah to open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, and our ears, and our souls to be able to recognize Allah, to be able to understand that there is an Allah in order that we may come to love Allah. And we ask Allah that in the fostering of this love, in the developing of this complicated love, that Allah allows us to show this love, to manifest this love by loving the creation, by loving all that Allah has given us in hardship and in ease, uh, so that we may become better human beings and we may become closer to Allah, inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim. O oh, our Lord, accept this service from us, for thou art all hearing and all knowing. Brothers and sisters, Jummah Mubarak, I want to, uh, inshallah, wish you a uh, Jummah Mubarak, but also that we will be uh, continuing our conversation on this topic, inshallah, uh, in the future uh, khutbat. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.